Thank you for attending ClearFly Communications Educational Series. This presentation is entitled Addressing SIP Concerns and Being Prepared. If you've attended any of our previous presentations, you'll notice that we always start off with who is ClearFly. If you have attended the previous presentations, feel free to forward, fast forward through this section. On this slide, we're going to begin at the very top, establishing SIP provider or established SIP provider and work around in a clockwise rotation. So who is ClearFly? ClearFly Communications was established in 2007. Currently, we have well over 3,000 customers, and our growth has been 50% uh, year over year since 2007. A couple other things that are not mentioned on here is that we're a financially solid, stable company with absolutely zero long-term debt. <clears throat> Excuse me, we aren't looking to be acquired. Uh, we're actually looking to um, possibly acquire some additional companies and products and services to add to our portfolio and provide you with greater opportunities. Our uh, feature set is fairly unique uh, compared to some of the other SIP providers out there today. Uh, some unique options or, or uh, products are we do have a DID forwarding. Um, what that means is if there's any possible reason a, a, a phone system were to go down, whether it's power, processor issues, internet issues, uh, we can actually redirect all incoming calls on an individual DID basis to a remote phone number. That is very unique. Um, that is something that as of today I'm not aware of anybody else offering. Uh, most of providers and most carriers do have a uh, ability to forward incoming calls to a remote number, but not on a DID basis. We also offer bursting. Um, a lot of carriers do offer that. Uh, what bursting is, if you're not familiar with that term, is a customer can purchase uh, you know, six SIP trunks, and if a seventh or eighth phone call comes in, uh, they still want to have that presented. Again, that's kind of a uh, – uh, it's dependent on the, the customer's phone system, but if it, their phone system will support that, we can pass those seventh and eighth calls through, uh, assuring that the customers, uh, your customers, um, customers end up uh, getting hold of them. So that's a bursting option. International call tiering is very unique uh, in our market space. And again, as of right now, I'm unaware of any other SIP carrier or a carrier in general that is offering international call tiering. What that really amounts to is we've taken a look at every single country in the world. We've broken them down into three categories based on frequency of toll fraud. Um, so countries that have very uh, infrequent uh, toll fraud cases or scenarios are, are grouped into tier zero. Uh, countries with some toll fraud uh, issues will be grouped in uh, tier one and countries that have a lot of toll fraud activity are going to be grouped into Tier 2. Uh, so what does that really mean? Uh, it means that your customers are going to specify what countries they call. We're going to open up the certain tiers to allow those calls to go through. Uh, for example, if they call England and uh, Australia, they're going to fall into Tier 0. Uh, so we'll open up international calling to Tier 0, but if they were to call the Congo, um, maybe Afghanistan, which are in different tiers, those calls would not go through, uh, not without them notifying us that they're aware that those calls are being made. So, again, it's just a little prevention on our side to make sure that your customers stay happy, you stay happy, and uh, ClearFly is providing the utmost in service. Automatic failover options, we talked about DID forwarding, but we do have some additional options such as disaster tenant, which I'll talk about in a second. Customer focus. So our customer uh, focus, what that really means is as new features and functions become available, uh, we're going to make those available to your customers. Um, DID forwarding is a classic example. A customer asked us for that, um, and it was passed through to the, from the dealer to, to us, and within three months we were able to develop that and implement that and provide that to, to the customer. So as new things happen, uh, we're constantly doing new development, um, new research, and providing new features and functions. So very, very focused on customers' needs. And again, it comes down to making sure that your customer is satisfied with your recommendation of ClearFly Communications. 
Uh, we also pride ourselves in the fact that our uptime is 99.99% of, of, of the time. Uh, what that really means is we just have a completely redundant backbone. Uh, everything from a phone system, or excuse me, from the SIP servers, all the way through to uh, network providers, to uh, multiple bandwidth options. So, and we're gonna talk about that under the gold standard block. Um, so again, focus on the customer, want to make sure that they're happy, want to make sure that they're content with your recommendation, and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll generate some uh, lead referrals for you. Clearfly also offers more than just SIP. Um, so we do have some last mile access, and what that means is in certain geographic areas, uh, we can provide internet connectivity um, to the customer's premise, and if we can provide that internet connectivity, then we can manage the entire uh, voice packets from our equipment all the way to theirs. Um, again, not all areas are, are available for that, uh, but if you would get hold of your account manager, which is either myself, Tom Hall, Sam Johnson, or Bob Jenkins, uh, they can uh, provide you some insight with that. We also have an e-fax service called fax to mail um, So if your customer is looking for an alternative to the old typical fax machine, uh, we do have that option as well. Disaster attendant to kind of touch on it earlier, but it's a automatic failover option um, other than the DID forwarding. Uh, what disaster attendant is, is it's really a, a full-blown auto attendant that again, if the customer's equipment loses connectivity with uh, Clearfly or vice versa, uh, the auto or the disaster attendant is gonna kick in. Somebody calls the customer's phone number, it's gonna be answered, thank you for calling XYZ company for one, for sales press one, for service press two, for uh, general inquiries or billing questions press three, or whatever the customer would like. Each of those single digit options are gonna be redirected to uh, a specific phone number uh, as specified by the customer. So that's our disaster attendant. We also have the ability to convert SIP trunks to either analog or a PRI handoff. So you may have some customers out there that aren't quite ready to upgrade their phone system. Uh, so they have a legacy phone system. It doesn't support uh, inherent SIP trunks. Uh, we can still save them some significant amount of money by converting SIP to analog or to a PRI. So we do have that ability as well. The gold standard piece, um, what that is, and again, touch on it briefly, but our infrastructure is completely redundant, twice over. Um, everything from our meta switch, which is a gold standard soft switch, um, all the way through to our upstream carriers and, uh, and to our pairing customer or pairing partners. Um, so our meta switch, we've got two meta switches sitting side by side in racks. If we need to do a software update on one, we're simply gonna switch the traffic automatically over to the, uh, to the other meta switch. So again, it, it prevents the customers from having any downtime. The reason that we partnered up with three major upstream carriers, and they're really considered the big three, which is uh, CenturyLink, Level 3, and Envoy, um, is, is because there's an overlap there. Uh, a lot of them overlap in, into certain territories. It also provides us with the greatest amount of coverage throughout the United States. Uh, why we want to have that overlap is, you know, there issues happen. Um, and we're talking technology, uh, let's say hypothetically um, Envoy and um, maybe called Zao Group, uh, one bought the other, but we're going to call it uh, Zao Group Envoy. Let's say um, they had an issue and it was the most direct route to your customer's premise. So that is who we're sending the traffic over. They have an issue, we can automatically reroute that traffic or actually manually reroute that traffic from Envoy over to level three until the customer, or until Envoy fixes their issue, and at that time we'll switch, switch it back. Again, what we don't wanna have happen is that we don't wanna have your customer go down. We don't want your customer uh, getting upset with you. 
and being frustrated and, you know, questioning your recommendation for ClearFly. So, again, we really want to protect you and we want to protect the customer. So that is why we partnered up with three major upstream carriers. We've also peered with a lot of the major last mile uh, providers such as Cox, uh, TW Telecom, CenturyLink, of course. Uh, I mean, there's a whole host of them. Uh, Verizon. Um, and the reason that we peer with those is because we want to minimize the number of hops or number of connections the uh, voice calls or the voice packets have to travel through. So we peer directly with those. It expedites things. Uh, it provides better, uh, better voice quality when we're peered. So again, we're constantly looking to peer with new uh, providers in, in certain geographic areas in order to uh, provide a better service. Uh, we're certified and tested on most PBXs. Uh, we just uh, actually finished our uh, Avaya certification. We do have, we are Avaya certified now as of, I believe, uh, July of 2015. We're currently working with Mytel and Shortel as well as a host of other uh, uh, PBX manufacturers. If you go onto our website, which is www.clearfly.net, go to support tab up on the top, go to interoperability, it'll actually list out every PBX that we are certified on, um, either from directly from the manufacturer or we're uh, tested and approved uh, through customer and dealer uh, certification. So again, take a look at it. Most uh, PBXs today uh, we're going to connect to and we're going to have no issues with. Um, that kind of brings me to the part of the, uh, the next section, which is a partner focus. At the end of the day, we truly, truly, truly appreciate you giving us the opportunity to provide service to your customer. We know how tough it is to make a recommendation. We also know that at the end of the day, without you, um, you know, we're not going to be successful. So we want to protect your reputation above anything else. And uh, one of the ways that we do that is that we provide dedicated sales staff, um, provisioning and orders uh, staff, and support staff. The sales staff and the support staff are available 24-7, 365 days a, a year. Uh, I am confident that all of your account managers would be happy to provide you with their cell phone numbers in case there was ever an issue after hours. Um, our support staff is available. Um, all times of day, night, uh, weekends, holidays, the whole bit. Again, we want to make sure that your customer stays up and running. Customer satisfied with you, your reputation is protected, and uh, you continue to rec excuse me, continue to recommend uh, Clearfly. Best portals um, in the industry, and the reason I say that is our portal really provides you with all tools and, uh, you know, complete view of everything that is happening in the whole process. Everything from generating a lead to tracking your quotes to uh, seeing what is happening from the date the customer signs to the turn up of the, of the uh, circuits in the, in the uh, voice paths. Um, you can also keep track of every single ticket a uh, trouble ticket that's ever been created uh, on an individual customer basis. So if you have not watched the portal presentation, I strongly recommend that you do so. There's just so much information on there. You can see alarms. You can see what phone numbers. You can see if the customer has paid their bill. Um, just so many pieces in that portal which are essential for your success and for ours. Um, lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about our pr pricing. So a lot of SIP carriers have a firm set price, and that price may change depending on if the co uh, customer signs a three-year contract or two-year contract or a, a one-year contract. Clearfly is not that way. We understand that every single customer, every single market is going to be unique, and you know your customer better than we do. If you turn around and say, hey, Tom, or Sam or Bob, I know I can close this deal, but I have to have the price at X. We're going to work with you on that. Um, we can change that price. 
we can work uh, within uh, within the customer's uh, budget, uh, within reason, of course, uh, and within your needs um, on an individual customer basis. So um, again, our pricing isn't isn't set. If the customer is gun shy on uh, doing a three year contract, then you know we'll be happy to make it a a twelve month contract. So again, just speak to your account manager. Uh, they can go into greater detail on that than I want to do in this uh, small section of the presentation. But uh, just understand that we're very, very flexible and uh, we're going to do what we need to do in order to help you close more business. So with all of that being said, let's jump right into this presentation and let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the SIP concerns that you're going to hear and you're going to experience. Uh, when you're going out speaking about SIP trunking. So the concerns really break into to six categories. Voice quality, stability and survivability, SIP hacking and toll fraud, programming, this may come from your own technicians, you know, what's it going to be involved, is it going to be uh, intensive, uh, I'm not quite sure how to set it up. So we'll talk about that briefly. Um, router setup, you know, you may or may not have the ability to control the router. We're well, going to discuss that as well. And then, of course, the big one, uh, you know, troubleshooting. So if you've got uh, some technicians that are traditional telecom guys where they're used to hooking up a, a uh, test set or a butt set and uh, checking dial tone and hearing static, uh, it's a little bit different with SIP. But it's not something that uh, isn't... Uh, that they're not going to be capable of. We will help you through that process. We also have a uh, presentation um, that, sh that is also recorded that is, uh, goes over troubleshooting SIP and uh, how to prepare for that. And again, uh, you may want to encourage your technicians to, uh, to view that webinar as well. So let's get into each of these uh, in a little bit more detail. So the first one we're going to talk about is voice quality. Um, to begin with, SIP trunks can be successfully, successfully deployed um, and provisioned on pretty much any type of broadband connection other than a dial-up connection, which I'm not going to even consider a broadband. Um, but uh, you know, whether the customer has a fiber coming in or T1s or bonded T1s, a DSL or a cable modem, uh, they're all going to work and they're all going to work successfully if you do a little bit of due diligence, which, which we're going to talk about. Um, I personally have uh, installed SIP trunks on both uh, DSL connections as well as cable modems. Never had a lick of issue on any of them. Um, but again, I did a little bit of due diligence and we're going to talk about that. Um, if you're unable to manage the router, provide some voice quality um, or prioritization on the voice packets, uh, we may recommend that you put in a separate broadband connection. That's all fine and dandy in, in the perfect world, um, but a lot of times customers are not going to want to do that up front. You may want to propose that to them and let them choose or decline that option. Uh, but as long as they understand that, you know, if there are voice quality issues and we cannot resolve that and, in, and our troubleshooting definitely points to the fact that they don't have enough uh, uh, bandwidth available at given points in or times of the day, they may need to do that. That's fine. But again, if you lay out the, the expectations and the possibilities up front, it really, really helps down the line. All right, so one option as far as doing your due diligence and, and uh, prior testing is you're going to want to make sure that the customer's premise has the broadband or the speed and uh, solid connectivity that they need in order to support SIP. One way of doing that is you can run a speed test. Um, you can... Go, I mean, there's tons of speed test uh, options out there. Speakeasy has one. But what we at Clearfly recommend is that you do a speed test directly to Clearfly. Um, the reason for that is if you're at that customer's uh, premise and you do a speed test on our 
speed test uh, link or our speed test uh, uh, application on our website, um, it is going to look at the exact route that it's going to take from the customer's premise back to our equipment. So you're going to get a better snapshot of what, what to expect um, you know, when you're deploying SIP. So again, you're going to run it from the customer's location, not from your office location. What you're looking for is you're looking for latency to be under 150 milliseconds. Um, if it's over 150 milliseconds, uh, the customer may experience some echo, uh, which is typically due to uh, some types of time delay in the voice packets uh, being sent and, um, and arriving. You're going to also want to make sure that the jitter is under 20 milliseconds. Um, we're going to go over that as well, but again, that's all due to network congestion. It could be some hardware failures. It could be some cabling issues. But what you're looking for is you're looking for jitter to be, you know, 20 milliseconds or less. Packet loss, we don't want to see any packet loss. Um, if there's packet loss, that conversation is going to be choppy. And again, packet loss is typically due to network congestion, um, faulty hardware, faulty wiring, things like that. If you see packet loss and the latency over 150 milliseconds and jitter over 20 milliseconds, you're really going to want to address that first and foremost. Um, if you can get everything into this range, your customer is going to have an outstanding experience using SIP trunks. So speed test is one option. But I used a term there a second ago that it is really just a snapshot. Um, and before I get into that, uh, let me just show you. This is what the this is what a speed test would look like uh, from Clearfly's application. Uh, it's going to show that the ports are open. Uh, it's going to show the the latency, the jitter, uh, packets sent, packets received, zero packet loss, and the upload and the download speed. We're always going to look at the lowest number here, which is almost always going to be the upload speed. Um, so that kind of dictates how many consecutive SIP trunk calls uh, you can have. So, you know, at a one and we'll just round it up, one and a half uh, megabytes per second, you know, if there's no voice traffic or, excuse me, data traffic running across that, I mean, you're going to get comfortably someplace between 15 and 18 consecutive uh, voice calls on this broadband connection. All right, so now let's go back to um, the snapshot on the, on the uh, uh, speed test. So why I say a speed test is nothing more than a snapshot is it is only looking at that connectivity at the moment that you are uh, running that speed test. Things change throughout the day. Customers can be uploading or downloading big files or maybe uh, employees that come in that, uh, you know, listen to streaming music, which is going to change the, uh, uh, change the uh, broad, broadband usage. Um, you know, if they've got uh, a DSL connection, it could be shared amongst other businesses. So one minute they may be getting that, uh, you know, three meg uh, connection, and the next minute uh, when all the businesses are, you know, sending files and so on, it may be down to one meg. So, again, a snapshot is perfect, um, or a, a speed test is perfect, but just understand that it is a snapshot. If that is the only thing that you're going to do, then strongly recommend that you run that speed test multiple times throughout the day, um, at least morning, afternoon, and before close. Ideally, you're going to run it a few times in between there as well to get a better picture. But, uh, you know, you at least need to run it three times a day. So what can you do instead of a speed test? There's a lot of software out there that uh, can take a look at that broadband uh, connection throughout the day or over the course of a few days. Um, you know, Clearfly is not going to recommend any. There's just a bunch of them. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that one that I have used um, successfully in the past uh, on my deployments was uh, Ping Plotter Pro. Uh, you can go, again, from that customer's premise, you can go to uh, uh, Ping, Plot, Ping Plotter's website 
download a 30-day trial and run it for 24, 48, 72 hours, uh, you know, whatever you'd like. And it will keep track. It's a very small file. Uh, they can delete it afterwards or you can delete it afterwards. But it'll show you what, what type of uh, uh, latency jitter and, and packet loss they've had over a, a longer period of time. That will give you a really, really good picture. Now, with all of these software um, applications, uh, you know, there's some things that you have to understand. You know, they're going to show they're going to show things that you know at given times it may peak and and so on. So you got to look at the whole big picture. There's also some uh, hops along the route that may be blocking traffic, and so it's going to show a complete failure there. But uh, what you're really looking at is the very bottom line. So let's take a look at a real quick snapshot or a, a picture of what uh, pink plotter may look like. So this is a ping plotter sample. Um, on here, I've already set the thresholds. Uh, so a couple things, you know, when you first look at it, you see red. And I'd set the threshold for the jitter at 20 milliseconds as per, you know, our desire. Uh, and you're going to see, you know, the jitters shooting up to 130.2 uh, milliseconds on the second hop. But at the end of the day, it's down to 27.41. So if you just looked at that, you would be extremely concerned, um, and we would be concerned. But understanding the network and, and what is happening there is, you know, is something that you also need to understand. So on this one, I'm just going to go through this very, very quickly. Um, this average column is average uh, latency, so 72 milliseconds well under 150 milliseconds. The jitter here is 27.41, which is, uh, you know, which is high. So if we look up here and we see it, okay, well, it's the connection from the modem to, to uh, CenturyLink's uh, first connection. So that most likely is a, a cabling issue. Maybe CenturyLink has some faulty wiring here. Um, maybe it's just, uh, you know, environmental. Um, wouldn't be really too concerned with that because it starts to decrease a little bit. It doesn't pass that 130 on all the way down. Um, personally, this is my snapshot from my uh, office back to Clearfly. I make SIP calls all day long, never have an issue, never had somebody say, listen, you're echoey or you're, or you're choppy. So I'm okay with that. I just understand that there is a most likely a cabling issue on this second hop. Um, also, that's the reason why it's showing a packet loss of 96 over here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you continue down on hops 8 and 9, you're seeing 100% packet loss. You're seeing no uh, latency, no jitter. Um, that's because that equipment is blocking that type of uh, signaling. So, again, I'm not worried about it because if you look right afterwards at hop 10, latency is fine. Uh, actually, the jitter comes down. Uh, so, again, I'm not real, real concerned with that. Uh, this last column, this MOS column, that's a – how do I describe that? I guess it's a, a, a statistician's way of uh, quantifying voice quality. A perfect 5.0 would be us sitting in a, in a soundproof room within a foot of each other having a conversation with absolutely zero background noise. That's a perfect 5.0. That is not realistic in, a, in a, any type of environment. Uh, analog phone line isn't going to provide you a, a 5.0. A uh, PRI isn't going to provide you a 5.0. Only a very controlled environment is going to provide you a 5.0. Uh, really, anything above four is uh, what you can expect with analog and a PRI. And in this scenario, uh, we're sitting above four uh, with SIP trunks, even though we're having some, some wiring issues at, uh, at hop uh, two. So good voice quality. Uh, if you get down to a three, it's going to be, you know, going to be okay. Not going to be great, probably cell phone quality type of, uh, of uh, voice. And uh, anything below that, uh, it's going to be a big red flag. So 
This, uh, this little chart off to the right is just tracking uh, latency. We see there's a couple spikes here. At 237, there was a spike um, in, uh, in latency, and it was also the top end of the jitter spike, and then it dropped right afterwards down to uh, right around 20 milliseconds. Uh, so again, if I were to look at this, there's a couple little breaks in here. The computer probably went to sleep, so stop tracking. But most of this line is sitting underneath the green, which is 150 uh, milliseconds latency. So very, very good. Again, I'm not overly concerned about the packet loss on this side, and I'm not really concerned uh, about the jitter a little bit. But uh, you know, overall, I, I can assure you that uh, voice quality is going to be solid. All right. So let's move on to the next topic, which is stability and survivability. So that question will come up um, at some point in time uh, during your discussions about SIP. Uh, the questions uh, that need to be asked are, you know, if, if the customer is, or the questions that may be asked actually are, are going to be, you know, are the, or is the SIP carrier uh, prov um, licensed by the FCC in your state? So ClearFly Communications absolutely is. We're licensed in all 50 states. Uh, if the customer is looking at other SIP providers, they need to be posing these questions. So you can provide them a little bit of guidance there. Uh, there are some SIP uh, carriers, and really not even carriers, but resellers of SIP services that are not licensed. And if they're not licensed, at some point in time, the FCC is going to find out, and they're going to turn around and they're going to back tax them for everything that they've done. And uh, those back taxes, depending on how long they've been uh, reselling service, may be so big that they can't keep their doors open. So you need to make sure that the customer is aware that ClearFly is uh, licensed uh, by the FCC. We do pay our taxes, uh, and we're, we've licensed throughout the entire United States. Next question, uh, the customer needs to ask if they're speaking to anybody else and, and for you to provide some insight is, you know, who provides support and what are the support hours? I've already talked about uh, ClearFly support. You know, we're going to support you and the customer 24-7, 365 days a, a year. Uh, it's all tracked via the web portal. You can go on uh, regardless of the time of the day or the day of the week and uh, see what's happening with your customer, uh, see if there's open tickets, what ClearFly Communications is doing in order to uh, rectify those issues, or if there's some additional information that we need, uh, you can see it. So again, you need to, you know, you need to emphasize to, to your customer that ClearFly does support uh, or will support them uh, every day of the year um, at all hours. Uh, and if they're looking at uh, somebody else, they need to find out uh, whether the, the other providers can do the same. So what about the network infrastructure? I've also kind of touched on that earlier. Um, so ClearFly is resilient uh, on that arena as well. Uh, we've got some overlap. We've we partnered up with uh, the big three, which is Level 3, CenturyLink, Zeo Group, or Envoy. And uh, again, that's to provide some overlap. So if any one of those three have an issue, uh, we can manually reroute traffic over the other two if, uh, if there's an overlap there and uh, make sure that that customer stays up and running. Some SIP carriers only, uh, only run off of uh, uh, one upstream carrier. So if, let's say, hypothetically, they're only running over uh, CenturyLink and CenturyLink has an issue or an outage, that customer is going to go down. Uh, this is just not going to happen with, uh, with ClearFly. What kind of equipment uh, is being used? So I also touched on that on the first slide. Uh, ClearFly uses a class 5 meta switch. Um, there's only two uh, soft switches uh, that I'm aware of that are, are considered gold standard, one being meta switch, the other being a broad soft switch. Um, the reason we chose MetaSwitch is because of the flexibility and their willingness to work with us to add new features and functions. Uh, the DID forwarding is a classic example of that. So like I said, we've got two Meta switches sitting side by side. Uh, when we have to update one, we update one, 
and uh, reroute the traffic to the other one, uh, and vice versa. So again, minimizing any downtime and uh, you know uh, keeping your customer happy. Other questions: uh, What is the redundancy of that equipment? So besides the fact that we have two two meta switches, besides the fact that we have uh, you know three upstream carriers are housed in a facility that is completely redundant from a power standpoint. Um, our building is, is also the housing or the co-location for Level 3 CenturyLink and Zao Group as well, uh, and that is the reason we picked that location. Uh, the building is a granite building, almost, uh, almost indestructible. Uh, it has a huge generator that if for any reason that building were to lose power, the generator would kick in uh, and uh, keep power within that facility. Clearfly has taken an extra step beyond that. Uh, we also have a generator uh, sitting in there in our co-location or our suite uh, to keep our equipment up and running. And we have a second generator on standby that we can have there within 20 minutes. So again, we're gonna make sure that our, unless there's some catastrophic failure or disaster, we're going to absolutely make sure that our equipment is up and running and therefore your customers are up and running as well. Uh, can SIP traffic be rerouted on the fly or how long will it take? So again, we've talked about that. Uh, we're going to manually uh, reroute if we need to. Uh, if the customer's equipment goes out, we're automatically going to reroute within, uh, actually it's under two minutes, uh, reroute to the predetermined phone numbers, whether it's on a DID basis or as a whole. Uh, so again, rerouting over uh, the upstream carriers is going to be a manual, manual intervention. Um, but the uh, rerouting because of an outage, uh, customer or uh, on-premise equipment outage, uh, we're going to take care of automatically. What happens if I lose internet? Uh, where do the calls go and is it automatic or do I need to notify somebody? So again, we spoke about that as well. Uh, under two minutes, we're going to automatically reroute uh, to those predetermined phone numbers. As soon as we reestablish connection to the phone system, again, it could be because of an internet outage, power outage, uh, the PBX uh, going down. As soon as we see that connection back up and it stays up, um, we're going to automatically reroute the calls back to, to that PBX. That is a big thing. You know, uh, I'm sure if you've been in the telecom industry for a while, you've had customers call you up and say, hey, um, we hadn't received any phone calls this morning, so we decided to test our phone number and uh, we're just getting a ring no answer or we're getting a busy. And then the next thing that comes out of their mouth is, you know how much business we lost, what are you going to do to, to compensate us for that? That is not going to happen with Clearfly. We're going to make sure that those calls go someplace. Um, so your customers are going to receive their phone calls. And, uh, you know, they may end up calling you and saying, hey, you know, all of our uh, calls are being routed to my cell phone. I would much rather have that conversation with somebody and say, yes, uh, you know, we're aware of that. It's a fallback failure or a, a failure prevention or survivability prevention um, from the carrier to make sure that your customer still got hold of you. Uh, we're working on that versus, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that you weren't receiving phone calls. So the customer is going to get their phone calls regardless, and uh, as soon as the service comes back up, it's going to be rerouted again back to the PBX. Um, so that takes me to the, to the next concern, which is SIP hacking and toll fraud. You know, the power of the Internet is that there's so much information out there. Um, the downside of the Internet is sometimes it's scary how much information is out there. Uh, if somebody who's just trying to learn about SIP and is thinking about it goes onto the internet and types in SIP concerns or um, you know uh, anything regarding SIP, most likely they're going to see a couple things that pop up: SIP hacking and toll fraud. So what is SIP hacking and toll fraud? So a SIP hack attack it, it could cause a PBX to, to shut down. 
or it could end up uh, you know, giving the customer a whole bunch of unwanted toll charges, uh, leaving the customer very upset with you and uh, your reputation in, in, in jeopardy. So what can Clearfly do to help that? So we're going to restrict SIP traffic uh, to the phone system from uh, specific IP addresses. Uh, we'll provide that to you. Um, so if I got in there, Samsung, I, I'd done a presentation specifically for Samsung not too long ago, and I, I kind of left it there. But um, if you can limit either on the PBX side or the router where the uh, SIP or the voice packets are coming from, like I said, we can provide you with the uh, IP address and the subnet, and you limit, you limit uh, all voice packets over port 5060. It's typically UDP port 5060 to that IP address. That's going to really eliminate uh, the SIP hacking portion. So most PBXs have a whitelist uh, in there today that uh, you can specify that. And if you can, uh, perfect. It's going to more or less eliminate that. Uh, if the PBX that you have does not have that ability, most routers do. So again, you know, ask our support staff to provide you with the IP address and the subnet, and uh, program up the PBX and program up the uh, uh, the router to uh, you know limit the the voice calls to and from that IP address. So that'll definitely help. Um, you know, want to change the phone system passwords. So again, SIP hacking, uh, you know, it's not just necessarily SIP hacking, but it's just IP hacking. Uh, you know, people have software out there that will go and look for holes in, in uh, technology, and phone systems are technology. So they've got a database of uh, default passwords, and they run a, you know, a software application, and it uh, looks for holes. So if you don't change uh, the phone system password currently today, uh, you should, including the admin password. You're going to want to disable international calling um, on the phone system and from a carrier standpoint if the customer is not making international calls. Um, by default, Clearfly is going to disable international calling unless you specify otherwise. Um, so. That's something that should be done, but as a former PBX technician as well, you need to make sure that you're, you're setting up the toll restriction on the, on the PBX as well. Again, if for any reason the customer does end up getting some toll fraud charges, you need to at least have proof that you've done everything on your side and the programming side of the PBX to, to uh, minimize that. Um, and uh, Clearfly will do the same. So that's that. Um, you're also going to want to limit the voicemail um, from making outbound calls if uh, the customer doesn't want that to happen. Now, some customers do want to have uh, the voicemail call them if a message is left in their voicemail box. And in that case, you know, you're not going to be able to do, uh, disable that. Uh, the other thing is you're going to want to limit uh, the, the mailbox, especially the default general mailbox. Um, on here and again it was because of the presentation was originally set up for Samsung um, but any mailbox that doesn't need to be there or isn't being used needs to to be deleted or disabled um, again a lot of these toll fraud charges end up being uh, filtered through the voicemail voicemail grabs an outside line and makes those calls so again, just do a little bit of due diligence, and uh, you know that will go a long, long ways with uh, keeping a very happy um, customer. Phone system programming. Um, you're going to want to check the interoperability guide uh, on Clearfly's website. I, I touched on it earlier, but there's the uh, address. Uh, you can just really go to clearfly.net. Click support, click interoperability, and it'll list all the PBXs that we are certified and tested on. It'll also have application notes. It'll also specify whether it uh, allows for a static IP address or a dynamic or a registered IP address. Um, so 
you're gonna want to you're gonna want to download those, those documents. Um, real realistically, you know, if you're familiar with the PBX, um, most uh, most SIP programming on most PBXs today is really gonna take you under 10 minutes. Um, no more than 20 for sure. But uh, again, based on your familiarity with uh, the PBX, you should be able to fly through that, uh, get it all set up, and those trunks up and running very, very quickly. Um, already mentioned, don't forget uh, to set the toll restrictions, especially for international calls. Uh, easy enough to do, doesn't take much time. It's just something that you know oftentimes gets left out. Um, and again, I'm talking from firsthand experience. I've programmed phone systems up 100 times, uh, flying through, getting it all up and running, and especially if it's kind of a crunch or the customer's looking over your shoulder and you may forget the toll restriction. Just go back and set the toll restriction. Um, again, a little bit of work up front is going to prevent a lot of headaches down the line. Um, don't forget to program the DID ringing assignments because the SIP trunks are going to come in as a DR, DID. Um, so it's very similar to a PRI. If you program PRIs on, on the PBX, it's really, really going to be set up very similar. You're going to set the, where the phone number is going to ring to, if it's a station or to a station group or a group of phones, um, you're going to set that. You're also going to set the outbound caller ID. Um, Clearfly will set that if you ask us to. So every phone number is going to uh, push out the exact same um, uh, DID or same uh, caller ID number. But if you have remote phones, especially if you want those remote phones to be registered for 911 purposes, you're going to need to control what outbound caller ID is associated with each extension. So that's really it. I mean, you're going to set up the, the PBX for SIP. Again, follow our, our guides on, the, uh, on our website. You're going to program the DID ring assignments, and you're going to set the outbound uh, caller ID. That's, in a, in a real nutshell, I mean, that's really what you're going to be doing. And again, that's one of the reasons, you know, it should take you really less than 10 minutes, no more than 20. So that takes me to the router piece. Uh, you know, there's a lot of concerns, especially from newer technicians, you know, about controlling the router, you know, how much is involved. They know telecom, but they don't know the data side. Um, so every router is going to be a little bit different. Um, doesn't have to be, if you're providing the router, doesn't have to be anything fancy, doesn't have to be anything uh, elaborate or very expensive. Uh, I've used some very basic D-Link and Linksys um, and Netgear uh, routers, and they work just fine. Uh, again, today's routers, even the most inexpensive ones, will do a lot of stuff um, that will help you with, uh, with the SIP. So what do you need to do? So you're going to need to make sure that the port forwarding is enabled. Um, so Clearfly typically uses UDP port 5060, so you're going to want to point that uh, traffic to the phone system. Again, most likely it's going to be to the processor, the IP address of the phone system itself, the same IP address that you're going to use for remote uh, maintenance. Um, if your phone system has uh, a VoIP card and uh, that VoIP card has its own IP address, you're going to need to uh, find out what ports need to be forwarded there uh, for signaling control and uh, for uh, voice packets uh, translation. So you're going to have to figure that out as well. And again, our guides will help you with a lot of that. Um, I've already talked about this as well. Uh, you should really limit uh, the uh, traffic if you can. If you don't have remote phones, most definitely. Uh, you should lim limit, limit the uh, voice traffic on UDP for ports 5060 um, coming from only ClearFly communications, uh, unless you're using multiple SIP carriers or, again, unless you're using uh, remote IP phones. But if you can limit that, uh, it will greatly, greatly, greatly uh, reduce any headaches down the line. 
and just you know the the t- typical you know every router is going to be a little different uh, footing out there. But again, it's not it's not really all that difficult. It's it's more difficult in your head than than it is actually in in uh, practical uh, uh, programming terms. So then the question comes up is what happens if the customer has a router and it's controlled by the IT department and the IT department won't let you get into it and do anything with it. So you've really got a couple options there as well. If that is the case, you're going to number one have to have a conversation with the IT department. You're going to need to ask them if they're comfortable with you putting your own router in front of theirs. You're going to program up a port on your router as a DMZ port. That way, all ports are open, nothing is blocked. They got, they'll have free flow um, broadband connection to their router, and you control all the the forwarding and prioritization. Uh, of traffic on your side and they can do whatever they want on their router. That is the perfect ideal scenario because again, I mentioned it uh, in that last sentence was you control all prioritization. You can set up that your ports that you're using gets priority over any traffic coming in on that DMZ port. So you're never going to have a complete quality of service uh, control once it hits the uh, the public internet, but you can absolutely give prioritization to the voice packets coming from that premise if you can do this scenario. So what happens if the uh, what happens if the IT department says no? Uh, their router's got to be in front. Um, so then you're just kind of going to end up reversing it. Uh, you're going to say, okay, well, instead of bothering you with setting ports and forwarding ports and being accessible if we need to troubleshoot, can you open up a DMZ port and allow us to connect our router to your DMZ port? Um, typically, they're going to say yes. Uh, so that's the second best scenario. Um, the only issue with that is if that IT department is unwilling to give traffic coming in from that DMZ port um, prioritization over the rest of the traffic, you know they may end up having uh, the data traffic, uh, you know, pull most of the bandwidth, and you're going to be left with what's left. Uh, if you end up having the customer calling you saying, "Hey, the conversation's really choppy, or it's breaking up, or it's staticky." then you're going to, again, have to sit down with that IT department and, uh, you know, come to some type of uh, uh, agreement on how their router needs to be set up. So those are two options. The third option is maybe you don't have a – maybe you just don't have a relationship with the IT department and they don't want to meet you or maybe it's a conflict of interest. Uh, So in that scenario, what you could do – is uh, you can ask the internet provider to provide you with stu- stu- two static IP addresses. Uh, you can throw a uh, work group switch in between the uh, ISP's termination point or, or their IAD and uh, the IT department's router. So what you're in essence going to have is it's going to be a uh, triangle. So you've got the uh, ISP's uh, IAD. You're going to have a little cheap and expensive workgroup switch. So you're going to have an Ethernet cable going to the workgroup switch. You're going to have an Ethernet cable coming from the workgroup switch to the IDT department's uh, router. And you're going to have a second Ethernet cable going from that workgroup switch to your router. And from your router, it's going to go into the PBX. So that's, uh, you know, that's an alternative. Um, and it's definitely, I've done that myself and it's worked just fine. Uh, if the customer is using some type of, uh, computer telephony integration where the phone system and the data infrastructure needs to be on the same, uh, subnet, uh, then that's really going to be out of, 
out of question. Actually, you know, all of those are going to be out of the question. At that point, you're just going to have to sit down and have a, a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the IT department, explain to them what ports need to be opened, explain to them that uh, if they're not going to allow you to have access to that router, they're going to need to be available uh, if any troubleshooting needs to take place. All right, so troubleshooting. Um, you know, troubleshooting SIP isn't the same as, uh, you know, traditional telecom. I mean, if you've been in the telecom industry for a while, it used to be, you know, everything was troubleshot with a, uh, with a butt set, and uh, you could check the voice quality, you can check if there's static uh, uh, or degradation in, in uh, sound. Uh, then it went from from uh, troubleshooting with a with a uh, uh, butt set to using a T-Bird, and then a lot of PBXs ended up throwing uh, diagnostic software into the PBX, which would show you you know blue alarms, yellow alarms, red alarms, and so on. Uh, that would provide you some insight. Uh, most PBXs don't have that diagnostic tool in them today for SIP. Uh, they're working on it. Uh, some have, but the majority of them have not. So you really need to, to become familiar with some third-party, you know, software that's out there. We talked about Pink Potter. That's really kind of a upfront, do your due diligence before implementation uh, piece, but it's also useful, you know, if you're having some issues, uh, especially with uh, voice quality issues. So congestion, echo, uh, staticky connections, Pink Plotter may be able to show you where that problem is. I've successfully resolved issues at customers' premises just using Pink Plotter. Um, a lot of time the ISPs will say they don't have an issue, but if you provide uh, uh, examples or uh, graphic uh, you know, information to them, those problems uh, miraculously disappear. So Pink Plotter is a good one. A port checker uh, is good. Again, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, just cheap, inexpensive port checkers. There are some free ones out there that are solid, uh, but I don't have a recommendation for you on that, uh, and ClearFly doesn't either, either at this time. We're working on that. But, uh, you know, port checking software would be a good one as well. Uh, the best tool for troubleshooting SIP is Wireshark. Um, Wireshark will show you everything happening during that call. It'll, you can capture the voice quality. You can listen back uh, from the, premise, uh, the customer's premise uh, side of things and then from the ISP side of things, depending on where you tap in uh, to, that, uh, to that call capture. So... Wireshark is something that you should become familiar with. Um, it's a free software. Uh, it's available. It's pretty complex. But uh, again, you know, ClearFly does have a troubleshooting troubleshooting uh, webinar that kind of touches bases on that. But there's also a lot of free webinars out there going over uh, Wireshark and how to set it up. So. Your tech technicians should uh, become familiar with it. They should download that free software. Um, in order to use Wireshark, you're going to have to either use a network tap of some type or have a um, mirroring port on a, um, on a router. Uh, so that's it. Um, you know, that's, that's really, you know, the, the big thing with, uh, with troubleshooting is just have a couple pieces of software become uh, somewhat familiar with it. If you pull a Wireshark trace uh, and you're not quite sure how to read it, uh, you can just send it to, to ClearFly's uh, support staff. They will break it out and look at it and uh, you know, tell you exactly where the issue is, whether it's on our side, uh, the PBX side, or anywhere in between. If you want to get certified on SIP, uh, there is a uh, school out there called the SIP School. All their classes are online. All ClearFly partners will get a discount. Again, speak to your account manager, either myself, uh, Sam Johnson, or Bob Jenkins, and they can get you the discount uh, code for those classes. But it's really, really worth it, uh, you know, especially as technology, uh, you know, progresses forward, uh, 
SIP is really the direction that all trunking is going. So might as well get certified, uh, might as well be able to put your best foot forward. So SIP school is a great school and uh, well, worth, uh, well worth the investment. Um, already mentioned this, so we do have that SIP troubleshooting for technicians webinar. Um, it is recorded. Uh, we also have uh, live webinars going uh, periodically. So if you want to interact with our uh, technicians and our uh, engineers uh, that are hosting that class, uh, you should just keep track of, uh, of our educational series and uh, when we have live webinars available and have your technicians jump in on it. So since this is a recorded webinar, we're not going to have any questions or discussions, but we will show you the contact information. So if you'd like more information about SIP uh, or about ClearFly Communications, uh, our, our contact information is as follows. So general inquiries can go to info at clearfly.net. If you have sales questions, uh, you can shoot an email to sales at clearfly.net or support at support at clearfly.net. Or you can call our toll-free number, uh, listen to the auto attendant, and uh, select the correct option. So that phone number is 866-652-7520. Thank you so much for uh, attending this webinar. Uh, ClearFly Communications greatly appreciates uh, your willingness to recommend us. Uh, we appreciate your support. And we look forward to a uh, wonderful, long, prosperous uh, relationship. So again, thank you and best of luck.